Hey guys, Wave Squadron reporting in, and we're here to talk about some really fun things that we've been checking out at Star Wars Celebration London. Mm -hmm. uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about a couple different things. Something from day one, and then something from day two. Yes. Uh, day one, we've already talked about a decent amount of stuff that we saw yeah, at the Lucasfilm. several trailers and stuff. Yeah, at the Lucasfilm Showcase, and... Uh, there was this fantastic moment where they had like all of these creatures and costumes and stuff came came out on screen on stage. I should say, uh, and that was fantastic. Dude, it was so cool. It like it opened up and they were yeah. all there and it pushed forward. And I'm like, oh man, these yeah. are so cool. Everything they've made. And then they all started moving. They all just started. Something started maybe, moving. Maybe was, not all of them, but quite yeah. a few started oh, yeah. moving. Like a third of them started. Like, there was yeah. like six or ten. Of them, of, yeah. of like the thirty that were yeah. there. They There's started, like two tubes in there, just and got yeah, up and started two tubes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was so cool to see that. I'm like oh, I thought they were all fake, you know, uh -huh. just kind of chilling there, but it was great. Yeah. So after that, they brought out. They started talking about the timeline. Ah, oh, yeah. The screen went black. This line just appears on top of it, and suddenly you start seeing these demarcations and I'm like what are the demarcations what could that be see I didn't even think about the demarcations or anything yeah. like nothing about that I just they were talking about the timeline and stuff and Kathleen Kennedy was saying like you know George Lucas has has you know created Star Wars yeah. and he always talked about what the future of Star yeah. Wars would be but also the past yes yeah. there is like, there is the future and there is the past oh man <laughs> um but yeah, yeah, we they talked about three movies and yes. brought out three directors for now, those movies. One of these I feel like either I've heard of or heard of rumors before. Okay. Where they were discussing ideas about like a Dave, not, maybe not necessarily Dave Filoni himself, yeah. but some kind of like combining idea. And it, it was rumored of like I heard like movie idea of it or TV show idea of it of kind of bringing together like. Lorian stuff, yeah. Book of Boba stuff. Like, yeah, a long time ago when they announced like you know upcoming projects like Rangers: The New Republic, they talked about how a lot of these shows were going to coalesce into some type of crossover, and it feels like that has which uh, is a weird word to me because like coalesce. I know. No, yeah, no, I don't know what it means. I say it crossover. The idea of Star Wars in a crossover because like cross <laughs> I know crossovers. I think of like oh man, we're gonna have a. DC Marvel crossover, sure. you know? Star Wars, to me, it's it's all Star Wars. So I can be sure. To call it like a crossover, I'm like, no, it's just the next part of the story, you know what I mean? Well, but I, get, I guess I what we're talking about... Because different shows. What we're talking about is, like, trickle-down canon, right? People sure. generally, they think of Star Wars the movies, and then they think Star Wars live-action TV show, then they think of, well, Star Wars animation, and then they think of everything else. Sure. I don't think that's necessarily the right way to think about Star Wars, but I yeah. think there's something in the general... Uh, consciousness of the fandom that kind of like still kind of ranks like well, sure. what's what's actually you have Star movies and then you have the books yeah, like it's significant when Gara Zavarelio shows up in the Mandalorian you feel validated of all of your love and attention I told you. Yeah, yeah that's, that's my boy you know and that's your boy because you spent that time on something else that wasn't uh, as validated yeah right mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, I, I so, understand that. So I, I get so what you mean. What we have now, though, this is going to make it feel like, oh, we're actually trickling up, right? Like this is what Reagan promised and never happened. <laughs> and if you're from the U.S., sure, I get what you mean. <laughs> yes, sorry. <laughs> but no, I, I love the idea of like, and if you've seen the Ahsoka trailer, which we had a video on yes. that and everything too, you know, the conversation or the the dialogue they had in that. Um, Mentions like heir to the empire. Thrawn and stuff is the you know? heir to the empire. So yeah, like, that's, this is our day two conversation yeah. two happening now. So like building up into that kind yeah. of idea and everything. No, I mean that was at the first panel too, right? Oh sure, that yeah. was the first trailer. The heir of the empire. Yeah, yeah they still. I just still Thrawn. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk, talk about Thrawn in a bit. We'll get to that in a minute, but like, just the build up to that idea, and it's like, well, do we get a movie then of like an heir to the empire type of movie, bringing like here's. Thrawn as the villain that yeah. we have to defeat and we have to amass a group to mm -hmm. be able to take him out and what maybe whatever's left of his empire, yep. you know? Whatever's left of those Imperials. So yeah. I, I'm really excited for that one. I think that'd be a really Me cool too. One. I mean, uh there's going to be something in uh while we didn't see the whole episode, we did see a clip of next week's Mandalorian. Yeah. And there's something in there that like my heir to the Empire, like uh little heart was like oh, maybe there's something going on here so yeah we're definitely getting this big pull for like who's going to be your next overarching villain uh yeah thrawn 
Absolutely. And I imagine that that's all going to come to an absolute head in a Dave Filoni directed Star Wars movie. Yeah. In theaters. Live action. Yeah. Yeah. Which would be cool. Uh, it was funny listening to uh, Favreau and Dave kind of talk yeah. about like throwing him in the deep end of like the first episode of Mandalorian or whatever. Being like, all right, do live action. He's like, I've never done live action before. Yeah, like, ah, you'll be fine. <laughs> like, you'll well, be great. Yeah, yeah, you'll do great. Just do it. And, so, and you can totally hear like Favreau in your head doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't so, worry about it. You'll, you'll be great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's going to be taking place in like kind of the time that we already are familiar with, right? Like we've already been watching Mandalorian and Book of Boba and uh-huh. we're familiar with the episode six to seven area, right? Yeah. Whatever Skeleton Crew is going to be doing mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But if we're done with that one, we're done we, with that. We still got two more movies that we haven't talked about. Yeah, let's go back. back. I say we, yeah, well, let's how go far, this direction. How far back should we go, Calvin? All the way back like, like, to the dawn of the Jedi. Like yeah. 25,000 years. years. Like yes. that's a long, it, so like they showed the main timeline and uh, it goes back and it shows like the High Republic. Mm-hmm. And I was excited, I'm like, oh, the Old Republic. The like, old we're Republic. going to the Old Republic that's yeah. right there. That's what they're going to do. Which is like 4,000 years. At that yeah. point, they hadn't revealed the whole time. They had, and the line continued off screen. Yeah. Ah, well, I just like, oh, <laughs> timelines do that. That's what it does. No, oh, yeah. Uh, but it ended on the last one over there. Yeah, and then it cut over more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dawn of the Jedi. I don't know if that's going to be the actual title of the movie. I mean, that's one that's on the back of my shirt. I mean, or like, that's just the era. It, that could be, <laughs> the era could be that easily, yeah. too. But... Well, I mean, I don't know if you guys noticed, but like this this symbol, right? This uh, the symbol of the prime Jedi, the first Jedi. If you remember in the last Jedi, which appropriately named as kind of bookends, uh, Luke is in kind of this like seating pool uh, on Octu, and there's a mosaic of the prime Jedi there. That is this symbol. So that's really cool that we're actually using uh, the Octu feel of the first Jedi temple that Luke ends up on to, and then we're going to go back and see uh, the force the Jedi in its primordial state right yes. when it was called Ashla and Bogon you well, know it was interesting listening to them talk because uh, well first off the director of this I believe James Mangold, is yeah, yeah. Uh, Logan right yes. that's him right yeah. Yeah, he's also going to be doing Swamp Thing Ah, cool. Oh, that's yeah. really nice. Yeah. Oh, so, I mean, I know. <laughs> I mean, Logan, I know that one. That one's already a good movie, you know? So, I'm like, okay, good. I, Fantastic I, I, movie. I, I feel like this could be really interesting. And he talked yeah. about wanting to do, like, kind of like a Bible epic or something like that. A like, biblical epic, yeah. much yeah. like Ten Commandments. Yeah. yeah. So, like, he's looking at doing something like that. So, I'm like, oh, cool. So, like, I mean, there's, like, no information on, like, hardly any of these, yeah. any of the, these movies. So, all of it's speculation. But I'm like, man, we get, you know, what kind of things is, like, the Bindu saying? Rebels, you know, oh. he has like, I was here long before, and I'll be here long after, here you know, and, and like, I'm the light, I'm the dark, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. he has all that kind of stuff, and I'm like, hey, I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. I love yeah. 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 <laughs> but like, you know, that's a weird, ancient creature of yeah. some sort, man, I love Star Wars, you know? it's weird, well, yeah, right. like, like, so real like, weird. Like, like I want like I want it to be so twenty five thousand years ago. I want it to be so long ago. There's they put a saddle and a pergle to get to the next planet. Oh. You know, that's what I want. Right? Yeah. Like a fishbowl and a saddle. Well, and that's one of the things <laughs> I was thinking too, right? Like why a fishbowl? Well, like, they're in space, Calvin. <laughs> they can't breathe. Uh, well, they can space on. But <laughs> but I mean, what if you have kind of like that Avatar Last Airbender kind of idea, right? Yeah. Where it's like. Well, how do we learn about like going into light speed off oh, because of the purple? Well, how do we learn about the force? Like, well, because of these sure. creatures yeah. or so like, do you have something like the Bindu or do yeah. you have something like the Zepho or the or what? The gods and Mortis. Yeah, because they talk. You can do a lot. The of director stuff. talked about wanting to go back to find like the first Jedi or yeah. like the finding of the force, right? Yeah. So I was like, what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> and how do you do that? Yeah. Where? What are ancient Mandalorians like at that time? Yeah. Are, are there Mandalorians? It's like bones. They're you know, each other how much of the galaxy is yeah. discovered? Yeah. Is there a Coruscant? Sure, sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. well, is is there an inner room? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to expect. You know, you could have anything or nothing. Yeah. Like, could, is there is there like a Earth that was kind of like mythos or anything in the Star Wars, like an old Terra or anything like that? No, I mean it's a galaxy far, far away is all we know. Right. Right. So Earth exists, but. Maybe not yet, and maybe not to be reached. Like as of right now, sure. Uh, and this was explored in kind of the, ex- the the old canon, but there is no getting out of the galaxy. Like there was sure. a thing called out, outbound flight that like tried and things didn't go well, and then the Yuuzhan Vong came and 
Yeah. Gotcha. They were outside of the galaxy and thus were not connected to the Force, <laughs> which was gotcha. bad for everybody. There's something with that. There was also something, I think, in Star Wars The Old Republic at yeah. one point, too, that kind of had this like almost other galaxy yeah. force that was coming in and invading mm. in a way, too. So yeah. there's been kind of things that they've messed with with that, but not sure. not much and nothing in the canon right now. Really. Yeah. I, I, the only thing that's close to that would be like where the... Um, Scares yeah. his people. Oh, the Lasan, Lasat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Lasat. Like, where, where they went they to like are. that special nebula yeah. thing and stuff like that. Yeah, like uh, that was. It seemed like it was outside of space, or like it was like yeah, it was unmappable like, territory kind yeah. of thing. Now they he did mention about the origins of not just the Jedi, but like almost the Force itself. Yeah. right. Yeah, that's what he said about the finding yeah, of the Force. Which you know, if if not for he was standing right next to Dave Filoni. I would be slightly worried of like, hey, we did kind of touch on that when Yoda went to the center of the galaxy and found the origin of life in the galaxy, right? Which sure. was that weird planet. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, season six. Of so Star Wars, I, I, right? I hope that at the very least, if they're going to talk about those things that, uh, I don't know, at the very least, acknowledgement is made of what's come before. Sure. I mean, if, if you have acknowledgement of... You could have that involved. Yeah. You could have the Bendu involved. You could have mm-hmm. the Mortis Gods involved. Yeah. You could have none or all of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, depending on how they do the story and how yeah. it works in. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of ancient stuff we don't know about the Force and mad mysticism and stuff. Yeah. World between worlds. Like, all that stuff that we just don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's also stuff like, uh, um, you know, we had a big, long video about midichlorians a couple weeks ago. And how midichlorians are these things that are in your blood and they are allow you to connect with the force. And it's kind of implied in that that Yoda arc that midichlorians kind of have their origin on that planet. It was called the wellspring of the force. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all life comes from there. But like Yoda says, like the force is within the tree, yes, which is alive, but the rock, the rock. which is not alive. <laughs> so the force, you know, is way bigger than just, you know, the, what seeded the galaxy with life and midichlorians and, and living things. Like, it's generated by all living things, yes, but it penetrates everything. Yeah. So I can't wait for something like that, especially, like you said, his line about, like, a biblical uh, epic, movie, yeah. an epic, What's which, that? you know, I, I talked about in a, in a video previously about, you know, when I was growing up, I was very religious and, and losing my faith in that I kind of replaced it with Star Wars you know which is why like you know and hey I'm in the mecca of my religion right now at Star Wars Celebration you are yeah sure. uh, this is like a pilgrimage yeah it's kind of like a, a <laughs> pilgrimage but uh, yeah I'm I'm very intrigued by what's going to be happening there uh, especially when we consider stuff like well George Lucas was thinking about you know in his version of the sequel trilogy he was going to go micro he was going to go small he wanted to go like what makes up certain things and maybe you can play around with those themes in a movie that talks about the origin of the force and the in mm-hmm. the, the prime jedi mm-hmm. yeah yeah could be cool but then we must go ah! to the future back yeah to back to the future in an era called <laughs> the new jedi order uh we had a, a, a director who's uh, a person i'm actually not familiar with uh Charmin Ubaid Chinoy, a uh, an Oscar winner actually, uh, won an Oscar from uh, originally from Pakistan on a documentary that she did. Cool. Um, but anyway, she came out and talked about uh, fifteen years past Rise of Skywalker, mm-hmm. and we're gonna need a, a Jedi to sure. lead our new Jedi Order. We're, we're looking at a whole new yeah a building right of the yeah. Jedi Order. Like what happened. After Rise of Skywalker, and I can only say what I mean, what happened in that room. What happened in that room was that she said that everything kind of went quiet. Well, and the breath kind of got sucked out of everybody. Well, she asked too, right? Yeah, she asked. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. right? She go like, ahead. Do you guys want to meet our Jedi Master? Yeah, and everyone's like, yeah. And in that moment, yeah, like everybody went at the same time. Yeah. So all the air is kind of like you know. And then the theme played. Ray's theme played. And Daisy really walked on stage. Oh, and it, it was such a magical moment. Everything roared. Yeah. Like, everyone very... exploded with excitement. Which yeah. I'm so excited for. It was for so too. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, I've got on record. We've gone on record. I really enjoy what Daisy Ridley has done in the sequel trilogy. Mm-hmm. And while I know not everybody's on board for something like that, I kind of hope that everybody can at least say that what I want going forward is, you know, just 
you know, I, I want good stuff going forward. I want to be able to be excited. Sure. And I, I hope that there's not people out there being like, yeah, do you know, I want them to change the timeline or something like that. Well, I'm yeah. sorry. That's never going to happen. There's already and people- anybody that tells you that, like I see YouTube grifters and stuff do this all the time. They they make these clickable videos saying like, here's proof while they're changing, they're getting rid of the sequel trilogy. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's never going to happen. But when she came up on stage, like all of that stuff in my mind, the doubt of how like, oh, man, you know, the sequels weren't really met with the greatest reception when it came to, you know, the, the critics quite liked it, but uh, you know, not so much the some of the older fans and, and people, a certain group of people but man, like when she came on, like all those doubts that I had, like they went away. Sure. I was yeah. like, oh my God, they're going to give her the chance. Yeah. You know? Everyone was so excited. And yeah. I'm I'm hoping that it's not just her that's going to be given a chance, right? Like how yeah. many story threads do we have that weren't fully explored within the trilogy, sure. you know? Exactly. We had we had stuff with Finn talking like with force sensitivity or whatever's going on with yeah. him that never, I, I was waiting for more with that and we never got there with that, you know? So I mean, yeah. Could we get John Boyega to come back into that and be maybe a Jedi or Jedi Knight having trained with Daisy and yeah. gone through the, you know, Patriot the, Turner's the ancient text. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, gone through that or whatever. Yeah, someone that can see all the times the Jedi have messed up and learn from that. Like yeah. Luke taught Rey, like, we need to learn from sure. our mistakes. Yeah. And like, is there a chance that we could have like a little bit of like a force ghost communication or anything too? Or I think so. like Mark Hamill or Yoda or whatever could be communicating to, to I mean, Daisy where she can Ray, connect with these people, you know? Yeah. I mean, if, if it were me, I would go full force into the, I am all the Jedi. I mean, you know, Leia taught me how to commune with those that came before. Yeah. Not necessarily for them to show me the way, but for them to show me the way. The what not is way. not the, the way. ways not to go. Yeah. yeah. Like, I would love a Sam Jackson to come out and be like, well, this is what I would do, so don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding with that one. Um, but yeah, I think it would be amazing to have a grand master of a new Jedi order that can literally commune with ancient Jedi. Oh, yeah. man. You know? It'd be like a my hero. Yeah, yeah. because I mean, you know, it's significant. It. We no longer have. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, throw that out there. Yeah, you know, like uh, in the stories that we were presented with in the sequel trilogy, like it didn't seem like Luke was able to commune very much with Obi Wan or Yoda that much. But sure. I think one of the reasons of that is that this the Force, while it was awakening, yes, it was still reeling from what the Sith had done to it. Well, sure, Palpatine the, is the balancing, the, and Palpatine oh. is and always will be the Phantom Menace. There's a reason that. Now that he's snuffed out and gone for good, or if you, Ian McDermott said today, he's like, I don't know, maybe. maybe. <laughs> but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if we might have, like, you know, uh, maybe tiny threads of, like, a Phantom Menace still well, speaking. Because if the Jedi can speak to Rey, maybe a Phantom Menace can speak to her, too. Even with, even, not counting that. Yeah. Through those movies, we saw so many times of her touching or doing something and connecting to past stuff, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. She touches Luke's lightsaber yeah. right and sees or hears all these different things and she connects mine with with kylo ren kylo you know? ren uh they're at the very end where all the jedi are communicating yeah. to her and stuff like that too so like maybe you know we've had different uh characters and jedis having like kind of unique powers and capabilities yeah. and whatnot like maybe hers could be like a connection to the past mm-hmm. you know i mean she is a daughter of a clone of palpatine or yeah. whatever you know like there's probably some powerful the there, cast, you know? yes. yeah like there's yeah. that there's that line there so mm-hmm. you know we could have some interesting ideas there and, yeah, and sure. within a strand cast like what else is is mm-hmm. there you know what else has been added in too right yeah because that was the thing they were looking at is like putting in like all these little elements to make the, the best palpatine they can you know yeah. and, i don't know it'd be interesting to see yeah. if they give her some extra different powers yeah. like you know quinlan not a lot of people could just touch stuff and they're not here's where it was sure Sure. So. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, there's endless ideas. There's endless directions that, that they can go. And I understand like some fans having the feeling of like, well, you're just making this shit up as you go. It's like one, that's how all fiction works. Yeah, and, and, and two, thing. like, like literally, like, and I'm not being, I'm not trying to be like, you know, uh, facetious here, but like, it's a living mythology. Like, you do weave as you go. Like, if the only the fates in mythology can look at the whole thing and, and tell you exactly what happens but you're the one and these storytellers of different backgrounds and uh, you know a diverse 
uh, reflection into the Star Wars universe. Like we can weave things, we can change things, we can retroactively change the stuff over here. We can play around with themes that were touched on and not explored. And we can make a really interesting character like Rey, who was nobody, and then who was literally the most important person in the galaxy, or I should say the most important vessel in the galaxy for the devil, <laughs> you know? Yeah. She, she had a foot in both of those worlds, and then she was saved by the last Skywalker, and then she now has that name, right? Palpatine uh, descendant now has the name Skywalker, where previously Palpatine took that name from a Skywalker. Mm-hmm. I think it's a really cool idea, and I think that there could be a lot of poetic justice to be done uh, with a galaxy that seemingly has the you know, Republic's gone, yeah. you know, the First Order's gone, the Final Order is gone, uh, and maybe you have just, what do we do now? It's like, all right, we get to start again with the new Jedi Order. Yeah. You know? Start bringing peace to the galaxy again, hopefully like they were meant to be way back when, yeah. right? And but lost, just they lost like, their way. But, you know, just like all things, like, it ain't going to be easy, but it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so that was us talking about, obviously, all that stuff from day one. Uh, but we also wanted to talk about day two, a small little thing in day two that happened as well in this video. Uh, what was that, you think? Ahsoka. <laughs> Ahsoka, what happened in Ahsoka County? We got, we got to see an extended trailer, right? We did. We got to see a remixed trailer. We saw with... it twice. <laughs> they, they did actually have enough time to show it twice. Um, well, they, they were, we demanded it. And John was so nice. Like, can, can we do that again? No. Yeah. We, we do you think enough, they were we going? Time. They were going to play it twice. Do I don't think, think they were going to. I don't, I don't think know. they were going. Like, to. I think the presenter was yeah. like, I, I have a set I know. time. Yeah. We like, they had gone. Yeah. yeah. He, he was, was going to end it, and John's like, Well, hey, hey, no, play it again. Yeah. Well, no, I'm in I, charge. I think yeah. we got time. This is yeah. Star Wars celebration. He like asked him. He like looked back, like behind a curtain somewhere, and like, all right, we're going to do it again. You know. So I don't think. Either he was thinking they were going to, or what, but yeah. because they did it and then they brought someone out, yeah. I don't think it was originally planned, yeah. but, ah. We got uh, a reveal of yeah. uh, casting. Mm-hmm. And I'm so it's, excited. It's not really a casting. He's been cast before. Yeah. It's a recasting. It's a recasting in yeah. live action for love. the heir to the empire, Ooh. Lars Mikkelsen. When we so they play the trailer, we obviously see that close up shot. We see the shot from behind with the ears, and I'm like, ears, I don't know, yes. it looks like a lot of it could be, but he's but, wearing shoulder pads, but, yeah. <laughs> no, but, but the extra shot, like, I can't tell you on that gigantic screen how good it looked. I mean, to be fair, he's just blue with red eyes, but oh my sure. god, it looks so good. All the skin texture is there as the, it should be. The room went wild. People <laughs> and you exploded. Yeah, I know. We all jumped up. Yeah. And you know, like when you're at these type of events, like there's always this anticipation of what's going to happen next. Like Calvin and I, we were sitting next to each other and they were oh, talking no. about, they were talking about uh, Professor Huang, right? Yeah. In Ahsoka yeah. That, yeah. that's played by David Tennant. And they like brung up like, you know, there's a certain doctor. Calvin just like grabbed to his legs like, is he going to come out? Is he going to come out? He didn't come out. No. Uh, and then when he didn't come out, I was like, all right, I shouldn't do that anymore. Yeah, I'm not going to sure. anticipate. I'm not going to anticipate. So they're like, so yeah, did you, you guys see who's playing that? Well, let's see him. And he, oh, Lars he just walks out like Hello. with this, <laughs> this slow yeah. like. Have you noticed walking around London? Calculated power. Have you noticed walking around London like, oh, he's. Cool people just walk around. They wear all black. Yeah. We don't see a whole lot of that back home. They don't care that it looks yeah. goth. People or, are wearing, or they, like, yeah. I'm going to sneak around. They're walking night, around like, like the fucking biggy fucking blinders. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They do. <laughs> but anyway, it looks fucking good. <laughs> he came out just with the, like, I don't know. There was something about the way he came out. But like the absolute like wall of sound that hit him. You couldn't tell it affected him. But it affected me. Man, that was amazing. It was so many right, people. It's what everyone was wanting. It's what we were wanting. Everyone there was wanting it. They yeah. Were, and, they, and I'm so glad they did that. Sure. His voice is so good. It's, it's iconic. It's so great. It's one of my favorite voices from all of Rebels. Yeah. <laughs> it took him a while, too. Be like, hello. <laughs> it was so hello. soft-spoken. <laughs> yeah. It was such a trick, too, because like they didn't have just another seat sitting around. No, yeah. Where it was like, here's where you're going to sit. Yeah. You they know? scooted people apart yeah. and brought out another chair. Yeah. 
Now we should say too, like they brought uh, you know a bunch of the actors from Ahsoka came out. A very special moment for us was when Ray Stevenson it, came out. I think we were, <laughs> we were the first three I, people in the entire yeah, audience in a sea up. of four thousand five hundred people. They announced him, and you just see three people like <laughs> screaming our hearts. They didn't up. even finish his last name. Yeah, just Ray, and we jumped up and started cheering. But when when Lars came out, like Ray looked so excited and yes. came over. I'm like, look at these two men. I love these men. I love them. Sorry, I was very excited. We all. Were. I'm still excited. Don't be sorry. I had trouble going to sleep that night. I'm just worried it's supposed to be quiet time now. I'm afraid we're too loud. It was so good. Well, they so take us out. They think I'd send us back to America. Well, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, we gotta go. <laughs> but no, it was very, it was very cool. I was yeah. so happy to see Ray Stevenson. Um, also, the, uh, I mean, they had uh, both of the Sith or whatnot, which the yeah, anti Jedi. So, but yeah, it was it was a huge panel of people there for the mm-hmm. Ahsoka one. Um, and it was it was really cool to be able to have because they had Ahsoka, they had uh-huh. Sabine, they had Hera, they had the two like Sith people, which they did dark siders. But yeah, you know what? It, like it could be really cool. Me and Melanie were talking more and more about what they could do, and I'm like, if they are doing world between world or the the, the sure the, the the between world area, like is it time traveling thing? The space are they, between worlds. Or yeah. Right? The is it possible that they could be bringing them from like. The past, and I mean, what we're doing with things. Stuff, there's you know? a like they could be from theories. any time, really. Yeah. And like it doesn't have to be that they survived mm-hmm. Order sixty six and is a fallen Jedi or something. They could be a Sith, and like yeah. they could be crazy if, over public. If they, were, they could be like he could be. I, I mean, we don't have a Darth Bane. He could be Darth Bane. He could be like he could be so many people. He could be someone we have no idea who he is. I was gonna say know? like, is there ever like a, a Sith master and an apprentice? That like go missing from the past mm. that we don't know where they went. Sure, sure. I do think that uh, I'm trying to remember because I got to the end of the first Bane book. I mean, he doesn't look like what Bane traditionally looks like. And sure. you had a, a Bane in Clone Wars and yeah. stuff at one point too. Played by but, Mark Hamill. Yeah. yeah, but I'm like, I think he had a a female apprentice towards the end of that book. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. maybe that could be him, but maybe not. You know, but it could be anybody really. So sure. I just love the Darth idea. Of, uh, What's her name? That, that sounds yeah. right. It's been a long time since mm-hmm. I listened to that book, but yeah. but like we could pluck people from the from the past. Like you open up the the, the mm-hmm. whatever that temple thing is that unlocks all these worlds or timelines mm-hmm. or whatever and stuff. And maybe sure. he comes in and she's trying to stop him, you know, while trying to find Thrawn. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what Ray Stevenson's going to be. It's all speculation so far because we don't know. Is. We did get confirmation of their names. Uh, Balin Skull was Ray Stevenson, and then Ivana Sokno is playing. Shin Hati, and they when they mm-hmm. said those two names in the panel, I was like, "Son of a bitch!" Dave Filoni did it again. Skull and Hati are the two wolves from Norse mythology. The motherfucker brought two mm-hmm. wolves in again. Yeah. <laughs> he, loves <wolves. laughs> he loves wolves. Good for him. <laughs> I know, right? I thought that was so cheeky and so fun. Um, but yeah, uh, we already talked about Ahsoka a lot in our other videos. Yeah, so make sure if you haven't, you check that out as Absolutely. well. But uh, yeah, Lars Mikkelsen, like, oh. you know, I, I've i recently seen him. I mean, he was in The Witcher. I've seen him. He was in a Star Wars fan film. Did you ever see that? What? Yeah, there was a fan film that he was in, like, a <laughs> scene or two. And, he's been. Which was, like, cool. But RRR. Yeah. He's been in Black Sails. Yeah. He's been in Dexter, I think. He's, yeah. been in, he's been a lot of stuff. But, like, he, you know, he's, you could tell, like, this guy got, he's in shape now. Like he was getting, he got, you know, really not, I'm not saying he was out of shape necessarily, but he's no, he's really. getting an older man. Sure, uh, but he came out in that three piece suit and, and the and the hat, and I was like, hell yeah, man! I saw some people. It was comments and stuff like that guy looks slow with his saber. And I was like, I mean, I think he's just he doing was snapping. That I think he's just doing place. precise stuff. I don't yeah. think he's wasting time on things and fancy stuff he doesn't have to do. He's blocking sure. what he needs to, you know? Yeah, I, like I, he wasn't taking his time like Vader. Just freaking those guys out on, yes. on the uh, what the Tanta or whatever, the Tanta Four. Yeah, yeah. the Tanta Four. Well, they also spoke about the uh, the the stunt coordinator, the the sword master that they have on Ahsoka. I can't right now remember her name, but they were talking about how she was in a temple when she was like nine. Yeah, um, training. Um, and I loved. They were talking like whenever you would do a stunt, like the 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 thing that. What was the exact word they use? They said that the greatest. I, 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 yeah, I did a stunt, and she said, 
that didn't make my eyes hurt. Yeah. <laughs> and it was the greatest compliment she ever gave. <laughs> yeah. Because while everybody else, you pull off a great stunt and the cast and crew is like, oh, that looked great. So look at the thing. You know, you want someone to be like, you're not doing it good enough. Do it again. Do it again. Push, push, push. Right? Yeah. And it's the reason that you have Wushu champion Ray Park in the middle of Duel of the Fates. And that elevates, elevates, elevates. Yeah. Um, sure. So I, I do hope that that's... Uh, I brought Liam way up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? So... Uh, I, I am excited to see what they can do with that. And, you know, I don't love the Inquisitor lightsabers, but we had an Inquisitor lightsaber in there, and if you're going to have someone with that type of drive and they can push, maybe we can get some really interesting Inquisitor fights. Or yeah. some flying. Yeah, maybe. Ah!